And I hope you're wrong that we'll never get rid of that. I, I don't find it at all a demeaning thing. I feel, you know, a, being a, you, can, you can spin it, I suppose, is what I'm saying. We, we are a part of nature. We are part of the great scheme. We are, uh, we are cousins of all living things. I mean, aren't those rather grand, beautiful concepts? Oh, I, c I completely agree. Uh, I, I absolutely, I think that is, a, for me, that is a wonderful thought. And um, um, if I can quote yourself back to you, I think the start of your book, uh, Unweaving the Rainbow, um, which was what Keats said Newton had done, wasn't it? You, you say, um, we're all of us going to die. That means we're the lucky ones yeah. because it means we're lived. I think that is profoundly true. Uh, we are extraordinarily lucky. And I always am trying not to take the world for granted, really, to, real, to keep that feeling of great fortune and, and uh, love of the natural world there. But I feel for many people, it still. I think we are lucky in more, more than one way. I think being biologists or being scientists also makes one lucky because one is able to see beauty and harmony in places where other people become rather too easily bored, I yeah. think. And I think for many people uh, are still obviously searching for some more profound meaning of life because their, their lives are not are not sufficiently satisfying. I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I feel that most people only, re only reach about a third of their potential, really. Mm, I think that mm. given, I mean, we all of us waste time. That's part of the lovely things about being alive. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> suggesting that we should be eager beavering away, you know, 22 yeah. hours a day and get steeped down to two hours or anything like that. But I do mean that we, we ought to have our minds open to, to many more things than we, than we actually do. And I'm glad that you mention uh, this business about eternal life, because I know you've been uh, very much in the public eye with uh, um, your attitudes towards religion and your attacks on religion, most of which, uh, I, I mean, I should completely share your views that I don't always think you've gone the most productive way um, uh, of going about it. But too few people, when they're talking about uh, what religion has done and offers you a morality and so on mm -hmm. and so on. I think most people are really struggling to come to grips with the idea of our mortality. Mm -hmm. I mean, death is, I find, a, a really wretched prospect. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I think of um, uh, Larkin, one of the great poets in his poem, O Bard, and uh, that, that poem sums the whole damn thing up for me. I'm not quite so obsessive or worried about um, death as, as, as he is, but the disappointment, the feeling that you'll no longer be in touch with this wonderful world, that is, and of course, um, as he says there, you know, um, uh, no rational, the, the people who argue no rational person can fear something that he will uh, will not be aware of, not seeing that that's what we are afraid of, that we won't be aware, that in, in somehow we are stopped, the anaesthetic why is it, from which Why is it worse than before around. you were born? I mean, what? Of course it isn't. No. But of course, before I was born, I didn't know how wonderful the world no, was. No, but you weren't anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, think, I, I, yeah, I share you, absolutely. Yeah. The, the, the thing about disappointment, I mean, the thing about um, no longer being in touch, that, that, that makes me want to make the most of it while I'm here. Of course. And to, uh, you know, Spend all the time, as you say, not breathing tw 22 hours a day, but nevertheless trying to learn as much as possible about the world because it is so amazing and so, so wonderful. Carpe diem is the, yeah. r really is it, isn't it? But I, I've, um, I do, I do sympathise with people who embrace religious belief. Um, feeling it gives a, a, a dimension to their life which is otherwise lacking. I mean, I don't feel that at all. Uh, um, it does nothing for me, I'm afraid. I, oh, I mean, I love going around old churches, mm -hmm. you know. I, I love the sense of continuity they, they give one. And I have a sentimental attachment for the good old C of E. Me too, yes. Uh, well, completely. You think about the competition, anyway. <laughs> you say that again. <laughs> I was brought up a Baptist, you know. It was very much an evangelical kind of stuff. Lots of good hymn singing. Much yeah. better hymn singing than in Church of England, I, I have to say. Yes. They yes. really let their, yes. let their hearts and lungs go then. But I, I, I don't know 
it would be require a very profound transformation of the human condition to remove this search for a greater meaning. Yes, but um, I mean, if, if we're talking about a, a search for an, an escape from death, if it's a lie, what kind of an escape is that? I mean, I, I, I don't yeah, understand I why anyone would say I believe something because I want to believe it. Because no, but that's no, of course. And uh, one knows how most people acquire uh, the religious faith. They're brought up in it. You yes. know, I was brought up and I can well remember I, I, I took um, belief in God was absolutely just part of me. And I always remember in the, in the war um, at very worrying times. I mean, uh, 1940 and, uh, you know, the German invasion seemed very real. I never had any worry. I was 10 years old. I never had the least trace of worry at all. I knew that God would not allow that to happen. Yes. And I, it just, a, no, no worrying thought ever crossed yes. my mind. Yes. And I think a, a number of people retain that throughout their lives. And it, it, is, it gives them a kind of strength which, um, well, strength is perhaps not the, not the right word. It gives them a kind of, uh, you might argue, complacency, which doesn't go away. Um, I don't know, it's very hard for me to put this, myself into that position mm, again. Me too, yeah. I can't really, I can't really see it. Uh, but I mean, all of this, I, what I'm trying to do, I suppose, is, is to say that I very much understand where people with religious faith are coming from. And... Uh, However abhorrent I find many of the current manifestations, and many of them are abhorrent beyond belief, beyond my belief, I nonetheless can see where they're coming from. I mean, it's interesting, you were telling me about this young woman who has uh, written this extraordinary book in which she, despite of all the suffering she had under this fanatical form of religion... You mean Ayan Hersiali, yes. yes, yes. That she still retains some understanding for where these people have come from. She retains a, a sympathy for where they're coming from, not, not for their views, which she no, finds no, abhorrent no. and ridiculous, but, but um, she, she knows what it's like to have that kind of uh, Islamic upbringing where, you're, where you, all the women are trained to be submissive and, and um, to not question. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't have her level of yeah. tolerance and, and uh, lack of rancor, mm. I'm afraid to say. It is uh, extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, uh, one of the more endearing aspects of human beings is, is a capacity to forgive. Uh, I'm not sure whether forgive is, quite, is exactly the word here, but um, I was very impressed by old... Um, Archbishop Tutu's, uh, you mm. know, reconciliation mm. uh, thing with, uh, with, with a party. And it does actually seem to have worked in some ways. Um, that is, it would be a great thing if it could happen. Um, uh, there are an awful lot of reasons for forgiveness going on at the moment. Um, um, Nelson Mandela too was, was yeah, so Mandela. good at, at, um, at um, yes. forgiveness. Yes. Yeah. But, but what, do, do you take a, pessimistic, optimistic view of the future of the world? I've, I struggle very hard to be optimistic, a short-term optimist. I think, um, what, I, I mean, I have children and I now have um, uh, grandchildren and one thinks about their world and so I cannot, uh, I must, I cannot allow myself to feel that um, there's not, you know, things aren't going to get better. What I'm quite sure, what I'm absolutely certain of is things have got to get worse before they can get better, because I think what we're going to need are some very powerful taps on the shoulder from the planet, uh, kicks up the arse, really. I, and I think we're going to get, we're going to get them um, from, from climate, from um, various forms of um, uh, unfortunate... Um, juxtaposition of climate and social conditions and so on. 